In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to use one of the specialist layout tools for rotary applications. We're going to show you how to use the spiral layout gadget tool to automatically create the vectors that will then be machined to produce the spiral column you can see on the screen. So this represents where we're going to be heading, but we're going to start by closing this file down and creating a new one. File close, create new file. In this case, it will be a rotary job type. Our job size will be a column length of 12 inches and a diameter of 3 inches. Our Z0 position will be from the cylindrical axis. Our XY datum position will be in the lower left hand corner. In our case, the machine is set up with a linear axis along the X axis. Therefore, we will be wrapping the Y values. But similarly, this could be along the Y axis wrapping the X. Our modeling resolution will be kept to very high and we'll OK that to create our new job. At this point, we don't have any vectors to go ahead and machine using the profile toolpath, so we need to find a way to create the vectors. Now, this can be done manually with due care and attention, but there is a very cool gadget tool that is available in VCarve Pro and Aspire that will allow us to create this automatically uh, without doing a lot of mathematical calculations. So with this, I can come up to the top menu and select Gadgets, wrapping and the spiral layout. So when I select this now, we'll be presented with a form on the screen with a brief explanation at the top and then a number of parameters to complete our particular vector layout. So we're going to start by specifying the number of strands. In this case, I'm going to have four spaced around my circumference. So that's four there. We now need to set whether we want the sort of spacing to be consistent or whether we want to work on sorting out a by a particular pitch. In this case, I'm going to go for the spacing between strands and I'm going to set that to one inch. I am going to apply an offset uh, from the start and end so the spiral will not be going all the way to the end it will be offset an inch from either end and is whether we want to create a right hand twist or a left hand twist in this case we'll be going for a left hand twist and we then need to specify whether we want coves at either end in order to sort of uh, bypass the end of the spiral vectors but in this case we won't include those so with this I will select OK on the screen now and we'll see that will be presented with a quick notification of how many revolutions for this particular spiral there'll be and it's 2.26. So now we have the vectors drawn on the screen and I'm just going to resize to show that in full screen and we can see that we've got our job space in the sort of white area at the bottom of the screen but our vectors extending to within one inch of the end of our job space. Now if you can imagine our a uh, white piece of paper there is actually going to be wrapped therefore the y value represents the circumference so these vectors are extended now in order to ensure they can wrap all the way around by 2.26 times to meet the end of the column at one inch okay so these have been pre-created with the correct spacing and the correct angle in order to get the required layout now if we come up to our layers we can see that a number of different layers have been created by virtue of the, the rotary model including the zero plane and the bounding box but the important one here that's been added in grey are the spiral vectors and you can see I can switch them on and off now so with this I'm actually going to now select those vectors and come across to the machining tab so I first need to set up my material so I'm going to set and pick the uh, make sure the diameter is correct make sure my xy datum is correct my z0 is correct i don't need to worry about the model position because we're not bringing in a full 3d model to unwrap or bringing in maybe some clip art to add on to the column and i need to be aware of my rapid z heights and our home and start positions which i need to make sure are correct for my particular machine material etc so with this I'm happy to move forward now I have my vector select so I can come straight to the profile toolpath and I'm now going to specify my start depth which will be from the top of the material which will be zero my cut depth will be down by 0.2 my tool that I'm going to use is going to be a half inch ball nose so I'll select that from my tool database and then we're going to machine, decide whether we're going to machine outside inside or on those vectors in this case it will be on and then I can just come down and specify the so I'm going to call this profile spiral and we'll apply that now and we now have a toolpath generated but of course I would like to see this in full 3d simulation so I'll press play to preview that toolpath and we can see 
before it displayed this in uh, a wrapped layout that it was actually creating the toolpath in three axes and then creating a rotary representation of our workpiece. Now we can take a closer look at the sort of unwrapped toolpath by coming up to our top menu and switching off the sort of wrapped simulation layout and we've got essentially our standard sort of three axis workpiece on the screen. I'm going to just draw the toolpath on now and just zoom out so we can see the toolpath in situ so we have our four profile lines and our set job size and of course by the nature of this being wrapped um, this toolpath will create the full sort of 2.26 revolutions to create the full wrapped simulation that you can see on the screen here okay so once again this is just purely a 3d wrapped simulation of the toolpath uh, it currently exists in this session still as just a standard three axis toolpath and only by virtue of selecting a rotary post will it convert that sort of y axis displacement into a rotational move so with this i'm going to close the form down now and now look to post this toolpath out ready for machining so i have it selected in my tree here and i'm going to come up to save toolpaths and we can see that it's automatically been showing in the top pane there the profile spiral with the half inch ball I now need to select a post processor so in this case I've already got the Mac 23 wrap Y2A so essentially that will be on my list here if I come down to the Mac layout I'm selecting the inch wrapping Y2A so my linear axis is X and I will be wrapping my Y displacement into rotational moves for a so this is the post that i will be picking and then i would obviously save that toolpath out now so in this case i'm going to be profile spiral and just save that out so that's generating the uh, post processed file that i can run on the machine or alternatively i can close that down now and actually the fact that i'm happy with my particular workpiece and i want to save that now so i can come up to file save as and just save that as a .crv file so that it can open that at a later point and post out the toolpaths so this exercise really is a very simple look at the sort of rather cool gadget for creating the necessary vectors to create the sort of spiral layout that uh, you may wish and of course you can set the uh, number of strands whether you want to set it set the uh, the spiral by pitch or by spacing and whether you want to sort of left or right twist and even whether you want cove so it's a really neat tool to be able to easily create the required vectors in order to create the spiral layout you can see on the screen